In fact, one of the generals um, came to visit us, General George Jumper, and wonderful guy, came to set and put him on, in, on camera in some little role. But I took him aside at one point, as much as you can take a general aside, um, and asked him if, in all seriousness, what I'm doing as O'Neill, are you okay with that? Or I, I know I take some liberties with uh, his behavior and such. And he stopped me in mid-sentence and said, Richard, I've got worse than you. <laughs> Keep it up. If your warmest welcome to your favorite teacher of intergalactic diplomacy and applied engineering, Mr. Richard D. Anderson. and Q&As and autographs made us feel like we were at the real Comic Con. Uh, <laughs> as opposed to? <laughs> as opposed to. Uh, we even had to, I, I don't know if you know it, but we even had to stream the talk show yesterday to, to another hall, because not everyone was able uh, to fit in. So yeah, thank you very much for, for breaking the Comic Con Prague. Uh, but <laughs> Have you have you enjoyed it? Because you signed like I don't know three thousand things yesterday. Uh, were there any specific weird items that anyone brought for signature? No. Right. <laughs> All very normal. <laughs> I was, but I did tell the story yesterday. I think yesterday of um, this the gentleman in I believe it was Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In the States and he was going to have a tattoo put on uh, his leg of my name. My name's about four feet long. <laughs> so he had me write it in a pen on his rather corpulent leg. Anybody know corpulent? I do. Improper word? No, it's fat. fat. He had a fat, fat leg. Yeah. <laughs> And I had to somehow write my name in it, so he's, next time I see him, because now not with close personal friends, um, he's, he's going to have a tattoo of me. Well, Richard E. And <laughs> not, not a photo. Yeah, started on the calf and ended up on his butt. <laughs> That's not true, but it sounds good. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope you're, you enjoyed your photo shoot. What I loved about it, that at the very first photo and at the very last photo that you did yesterday, you, will, you were smiling, you know, in, in a seem, what seemed at least, a sincere way. How do you do that? You have like a special regeneration chamber or, or some special pills? You've been down there, you know, for like the whole day and you are still smiling at people at the very end. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a happy guy. <laughs> Severely depressed, but happy. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's, it's... <laughs> I think that's so that we were all born. 
born with these special muscles that keep smiling. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Get heavy. Well, yesterday we talked mostly about uh, Stargate because we have also uh, Cory here. Uh, today, I guess we can attend to another iconic role of yours, uh, which was a certain guy called Angus MacGyver. Uh, do I believe correctly that you were actually the one who invented his first name? Well, I think the name existed before it <laughs> didn't quite invent it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, I mean, as the story goes, and it's very boring, but I was at, we didn't have a first name for him um, through all the years that we had been doing the show, and I went to an event in Vancouver in, in the big uh, arena that they have hockey games in, and I think it was a hockey game, but on the board um, that lit up, they were promoting something about something, some governmental thing uh, that had to, uh, that was starring the mayor of the town of Vancouver and his name was Angus O'Connell or Angus his last name. And I just it just burned all you know it etched itself in my brain I just, that's it. <laughs> it goes with MacGyver, which is Scots Irish I'll be <laughs> Diplomatic about that, but um, yeah, so it's, see, I told you it was boring. Oh, <laughs> stick with me on these things. Yeah, I'm not sure if you know that MacGyver was quite big here, uh, possibly because we are quite a, a nation of MacGyvers. You know, we like to fix things on our own and not pay anyone to do that. Uh, there is even an internationally successful cartoon about two MacGyvers, but instead of Mac, they are called Pat and Matt. Um, I'm not sure I make some DVD. You know, it's, you know, it, it's a Czech cartoon about two MacGyvers, basically. <laughs> Lost me completely. Okay. <laughs> I, I hope I will find you somewhere. In, there's a cartoon. There's a cartoon about two sort of MacGyvers. Uh, yeah, I will try and get you a DVD. And they go through life together. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they live in adju adjacent houses and fixing things, MacGyvering things. Yeah. No, and they have no sex life whatsoever. <laughs> time between all of the MacGyver men. Well then, yeah, they're not MacGyver if they have sex in them. <laughs> well, there were like a, a million episodes of MacGyver. Is there anyone that, that still stands out in, in your memory? Nope. <laughs> um, no, well, that era of my life slash career is fading from my memory. Uh, only because I'm old, that's all. Um, if motivated, I could recall. Um, there, were, there was no tragedy or any... I mean, I broke my back and three fingers and dislocated a kneecap. A bunch of other incidentals um, that altered the course of my life to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Those were scripted, or that was you, you improvising? Oh, I wish they were scripted. <laughs> the insurance company would be a lot happier, too. <laughs> um, no, I, can, I think overall, the fact that they would let me do as many stunts as I could sneak into doing. I had a great relationship with the uh, uh, stunt coordinator, and because the company didn't want me to do anything except, you know, be the face guy. And, uh, but I was, at that point in life, um, fairly athletic and healthy and vital and misbehaving and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so I, I started to insist later on on doing some of the, the stunts. In retrospect, any of you pursuing, you know, being the third MacGyver, <laughs> Don't do your own stunts. Just let them do their job. 
But uh, yeah, I got to do my own skiing and some of my motorcycle, the riding that took place in there, swinging from ropes and all that kind of dumb kid stuff. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun. Well, I, I guess people remember those episodes by the gadgets that, that MacGyver actually made. Like, you, you will remember the one with the, with the plane with the, from the duct tape? Or the, the one with the, uh, with the ant? But there was this one episode that I guess no one ever asked you before. It's called For Love or Money. And uh, uh, MacGyver is supposed there to, to go and uh, rescue a political prisoner. A spring him from Cytriac prison in Czechoslovakia. Actually, his name is Anton Dubček, which is a yeah, typical Czech name. I knew that. <laughs> and, and the plot is that he, he, he goes with this other female undercover agent for a honeymoon, like fake honeymoon, to communistic Czechoslovakia to do this secret mission. And uh, I was wondering, like, any nice memories from Czechoslovakia back then? <laughs> It looked a lot like Los Angeles. <laughs> but the people were just nice. Oh. But for us, I think it was a blast because this was like 1995, 1996 when it was shown here. And, and to see, you know, this big American show, and there would be Czech, Czech uh, letterings, like there would be this oxygen, it would be called Kisli, that was a blast. And not just because MacGyver made it, you know, explode, as it usually did, but that, that was a big thing for us, I guess. I was always wonder when I see foreign, to us foreign, us meaning Americans. <laughs> um, if seeing that, I, I'm already curious about the signage you see in any any show, whether it's you know sending secret uh, messages across the universe or <laughs> or back home. Uh, oh yeah, th this was a, actually in Stargate Atlantis. Uh, there was a certain actor who's called David Nickel, uh, and he has like Czech ancestry, and he his character was Czech, and he was cursing in Czech the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, yeah, there's 10 million people in the world who hugely appreciate it. <laughs> there was quite an iconic aspect of the character of MacGyver, which was the hair, you know, which is still universally sometimes called the MacGyver. But there's an exception uh, in Czech Republic we call it differently, but we still we, we still consider this to be the hero haircut. <laughs> this, this is the first example. The second, yeah, this is the second reason why we call it the hero haircut. Hello. And the third. One. Yeah. I had no control over my hair. Um, it grows on its own. I swear. It just keeps coming back. So. I don't know. Um, I just got out of the shower, as you can tell, <laughs> today. But I'm losing it, if that's any consolation. <laughs> it's going away. Like the, you're losing the hair or losing it overall? All of the above. <laughs> but so, so it was growing on your own, but uh, on their own. But, but the highlights, those also appeared on their own? Completely natural. <laughs> Many California sun. Yeah. yeah, the ocean did it. That's actually, well, I'll bust myself on this. Um, first time I went to California, I was 16, 17, I don't know. I hopped a freight with two other friends. And we went across from Minnesota to the left side of the United States and then down to, um, to California. And um, and while we we're out there, just, you know, no money and kind of exploring mostly San Francisco and that general vicinity, but we are gone for most of the summer and we all decided um, to dye our hair like blonde-ish. <laughs> what? You look shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's not what you 
usually guys in Czech Republic do for fun? Well, when they're, you know, 16 years old and hopping freights, you're pretty much going to do anything okay. at that point. Anyway, the point being, we got back to uh, Minnesota. People mentioned and kind of commented on how blonde we look. We're also just dark from the sun and stuff. That was natural. <laughs> but uh, no, we were totally busted because we, each of us, independent of each other, said, oh, the sun did it. This is, oh, the sun, and oh, and the salt in the ocean. It turned me blonde with roots. <laughs> So again, absolutely natural in, in the MacGyver series, I guess. No, the work of, oh, it, it, are there kids here? Can I say? Máme tu nějaké děti? No, no kids. <laughs> it's just one word. Um, when I uh, started out doing MacGyver, Henry Winkler, you all know, um, was my boss, basically. He's uh, one of the executive producers. But after a couple of episodes, and there was a screen test prior to that, Henry came to set, took me aside, and said, uh, would you mind putting some, like, uh, you know, highlights in your hair? Because, you know, I, all I had was brown. It was brown hair. And uh, he said, you know, Edward, the camera's not being too kind to you. Well, let me... Let me put it this way, you look like shit on a stick. <laughs> in, in 2012, you returned uh, to your role of MacGyver for a little bit for the Super Bowl commercial with, with Mercedes, which was like 12 minutes or something like that. But I was wondering, is there any chance you might be, you know, returning back to, to MacGyver uh, now? Like, just to see him solve, you know, find workarounds around uh, being of a, of a certain age and, uh, yeah, like senior MacGyver. I've actually given that some thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and the projections I've made about recreating the role in modern day, first of all, um, it would be funny just to watch an old man trying to do what MacGyver did. <laughs> because what MacGyver did caused me to be an old man. <laughs> I don't think a guy like MacGyver would be necessary in this day and age because, first of all, why didn't MacGyver ever carry his cell phone? Come on, anybody? No? There's so much technology this, today that um, it just wouldn't make sense at all. Well, not that it made sense then, either. Because <laughs> there may not have been telephones back in MacGyver's day, but um, I, I would love the opportunity to uh, play MacGyver as, as my real age, which is old. And, um, I think it would be funny. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, um, kind of a, well, it would be a comedy instead of whatever it was. <laughs> uh, would anyone watch that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe okay, I'll, I'll do it. to our another theme. Would you rather spend your free time with O'Neill or MacGyver? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have a question from the, from the audience. Uh, who would you rather spend your free time with? O'Neill or MacGyver? Oh, oh. Um, would I want to spend mm -hmm. my time with? Mm -hmm. With whom would I want to spend my time with? I don't know. Um, of course, I want to say a combination of the two, but that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> me. 
and I don't want to spend any more time with me. <laughs> I don't know, uh, O'Neill seemed to lean a little more toward what, yeah, you know, is, I mean, except that he was a military guy, which I respect, but there's no way I could do that. <laughs> First of all, I'm too old. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a running theme. Um, I don't know, I, I, I wasn't uh, MacGyver kind of boring? No. Oh, God. <laughs> You're not being honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he had greater opportunity to be because he was military. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think for the sense of humor, maybe O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Although Angus, <laughs> no, forget it. And he had the name Angus. <laughs> well. Stargate was extremely huge in, in Czech Republic. Máme tady rádi, když jsme brali někdo, to se hodně líbí. But there, and there are multiple generations now that grew up on it because it's been on Czech TV for like 20 years, you know, basically non-stop. So that's that's probably it is still on, now it's on two channels simultaneously. <laughs> But you might have even possibly influenced our presidential vote uh, a few weeks ago. Which one? <laughs> Which one? Which one? Uh, the good side. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, because as it happens, one of the candidates was a real life general. Uh, he met his wife at uh, the military. And yeah, it, maybe that sounds similar. We have a photo called the President. <laughs> Um, 
hitting a golf ball through the gate. Who knows what to do? Yeah. How do you know these things? It's the only one that I know. I promise. <laughs> Um, it, which, by the way, was a, a really fun gag, too. Because did, did we not um, also show the planet upon which the golf ball landed? No. No? <laughs> that didn't... Those bastards. <laughs> I insisted that we see where it landed. You know, like, plopping out of the, the gate in some some other gal or something. <laughs> they didn't show them? No. Watson, just waiting to happen. I think it would be the perfect, very, very last scene of the whole SG-1 would be that, that moment when the, the ball just drops. It would be the perfect yes. last scene. And just short of the pin. <laughs> Quite go in. Well, um, Actually, we have a clip from that show, which kind of also uh, connects to the question that we've got here. Like, if you ever heard yourself in a different language, can you speak any languages, really? Yes. And no. Heard that? <laughs> uh, we can show that you speak pretty good Czech. Poprosím o ukázku hvězdná brána. Ať už to stavěl kdokoliv, je to impozantní. Vešly by se sem všechny pyramidy na zemi a ještě by zbylo místo. Tady bych to nechtěl vytápět. Řeknu ti ty jelku? Že jestli brzy nezjistíme, jak z toho ven, tak se scvoknu. Scvoknu. Co znamená přijít o rozum. Zbláznit se. Zešnit. Zmankořit. Přestat se ovládat, mít okolečko víc, plácat pátý přes devátý, zblebnout! But 
MacGyver, on the other hand, was, you know, kind of almost a shy but honest kid from Minnesota, which is kind of what I am. <laughs> I, I, did I dodge your question well enough? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, thank you for being here. You are really amazing. And uh, you look a little tired and to say it on Thursday <laughs> that you are partying with the kids under the astronomical clock. So I want to ask how that party looks and continues. Oh, it's loud. It's loud. You see these right here? Well, let's be honest, it's the lighting. <laughs> it's the lighting. No, uh, I, I mentioned yesterday that um, this is a town of, at this point in the calendar, apparently, someone's telling me, trying to dodge my complaint, of uh, there being boisterous activity that got louder because I, I believe alcohol might have been involved. <laughs> um, with, that seemed to gather in front of the, uh, the clock, the, I almost said anatomically correct <laughs> clock. What is it, astrological? No, astronomical. astronomical. <laughs> no, the astrological clock. <laughs> um, I, 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 well, I am complaining. Um, but it's okay, I and mean, it's life, and then it goes on, and some mad naked man standing in the window saying, go home. <laughs> Doesn't have an effect at all. <laughs> Thank you, enjoy the pride. Dobrý den, já bych se chtěl zeptat uh, možná takovou trošku zalobnější otázku a to je na postavu Čeka Omnila, uh, když šlo vlastně o brigadního generála, jako vlastně měl pracovní smlouvu. Měl být plnohodný pracovní úvaze, nebo šlo třeba jenom o nějakou dohodu, že mu jenom řekli, hele Čeku, přijde prostě na tu základnu, nebo budeme si možná se dostaneš do nějaké ty časové smíčky a budeš si prostě ty své obrázky na tamíře. for us, like what sort of work arrangement there was. <laughs> And they're pretty strict with their rules, so I, I could tell you a serious story, but, you know, your question was so wonderful. I think I'll just let you go away with the last story. Thank you. We did have a wonderful relationship with the, uh, with, with the Air Force in the States. They let us use their uh, airplanes. Those, uh, jets and stuff for mostly standing props, and, uh, but also as far as uh, the the nature of what we were doing as a secret entity of the Air Force. Um, I mean, they they were all for it. They they just gave us the go ahead. In fact, one of the generals um, came to visit us, General George Jumper. And 
wonderful guy, he came to set, and put him on, in, on camera in some little role. So, but I took him aside at one point, as much as you can take a general aside, um, and asked him if, in all seriousness, if, if what I'm doing as O'Neill, are you okay with that? Or I, I, I know I take some liberties with uh, his behavior and such. And he stopped me in mid-sentence and said, Richard, I've got worse than you. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> Hi, it's really incredible to see you. So I wanted to ask, I think we established you have quite a uh, lot in the Jack O'Neill. So do you find fishing as relaxing as Jack does? No. <laughs> much. Um, I scuba dive. <laughs> um, and I would, I tried doing some, mostly uh, collecting of lobster bugs, we call it in the States. What do you call them here? Lobsters? We don't have those. <laughs> have you heard of the ocean? <laughs> there are several of those around. <laughs> Simpsons, which is not you, oh. or maybe Patty or Selma. Uh. <laughs> Let's think. Um, well, of the main characters, I'm, I'm just, I'm a fan of Homer, I'm sorry. He, he says it all for me. <laughs> but uh, the ancillary, is that the right word? The peripheral character? Mm -hmm. Um, you got one? Yeah, I want Mr. Burns because of the jokes about being old and so tiny, it's hilarious. Yeah, I identify with him. Uh, 
Brigadier General. Yes. Uh, all right. And I busted. Totally busted. <laughs> yeah, that was... That, that, that. Yeah, it was an honor to receive this thing. They, they, I, they just chose me to receive this... Um, Award, let's call it that. It was uh, actually a coin that, was, that I had analyzed, and it's not real silver. <laughs> not even a uniform? Pardon? Not even a uniform? You didn't get a uniform? Oh, no, no. I got, I got a really nice uh, a plaque and then um, some, uh, yeah, a nice award, let's put it that way. But I went to Washington, D.C., and had to. Uh, hobnob with the real generals and that uh, it was odd because, well, first of all, I was being brought to Washington, D.C. to go to this uh, event to receive my honorary generalship. <laughs> there were like real generals <laughs> who were retiring or being honored. So I was kind of like, sort of the opening act. And then they got me into the wings and got down to the real show. But um, in my mind, I'm, I, I rule the world. <laughs> or, you know, at least some part of the Air Force. Does this mean that you would have to go to war if there was one? Damn straight, woman. <laughs> Funnier. 
I think. But, um, uh, no, they, they played a trick on me, Dave. And, uh, no, uh, yeah, I think it was improvised. And she, Amanda is such a professional that she may have cleared it with uh, one of the writers or, or Brad Wright. Uh, but it, uh, when she said it, I didn't break. I stayed in the, in the scene. And I think uh, in the first take, I just did a very, because she was in, wasn't she in my arms, kind of? Like, weren't we trying to stay warm? I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> li li <laughs> you were lying on the ice. Yeah. Yeah, and trying to break it, I think. To find out the DHD. We weren't hugging, huh? <laughs> oh, later? <laughs> well, at which time when later, when we're trying to stay warm and we're hugging, I think, I, no, yeah, what, I, I said there was a silence and we're hugging and shivering and there was a pause and I said, it's my revolver, I promise. <laughs>
started um, um, uh, recording the, the Starlight TV series, uh, she heard that you had in contract that your character, character must be uh, funny. Is, it, is that true? No? No. <laughs> no, not at all. That's, that would be a very hard um, addendum or item to get into any contract because what if we, you know, let, let's say a comedian was uh, signing a contract and he put that in there that, you know, I must be funny. What if he's not? <laughs> okay, that is to say uh, that he, uh, that the car uh, character uh, should uh, be allowed to do jokes and so on. No, that's not. What happened, if you want the boring truth, <laughs> uh, I, when we started the show we had these things called table reads. Mm -hmm. They exist in other parts of show business, but they take a lot of time and I mean it's, it's kind of just to give the cast and crew and people an idea of what's going to transpire. So it's a fairly long process. What I would do during the table reads is improvise stuff, lines. I would take the basic idea to keep the story rolling, but twist it just a little bit as you see me do tonight, um, this morning. <laughs> and, uh, and it would generally get a laugh, not always. I mean, it was just me playing. But what I found, out, I found later was it was at the expense of the writers who were in the room as well. And I uh, talked with Brad Wright, great, guy, smart and creative. Um, but we had just met, and uh, after about three or four table reads, um, he found a moment alone with me, and we just started a discussion, and he eventually got around to saying that you realize that you're showing a disservice to the writers. You're almost offending the writers by doing your own thing. And it was a very profound moment for me because um, I, I hated flipping. I hated flipping any kind of uh, discomfort or, you know, uh, like dogs. I can't stand to see a dog limp, let alone be uh, beaten. It was a hot so <laughs> hot I think. But um, I don't know what to say about it except that um, I realized that he was right and I didn't have to go to the next table read and see the reactions of the writers. I knew that, that it was it was wrong what I was doing. You know, I can do what I I do later, like in a, in a more appropriate setting, like the set in front of the camera, wasting time, <laughs> like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I changed my ways because of that moment. I, he was totally right. I was totally busted and wrong. So, you know, that's that was your question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. For there was one last question from the app, uh, and it comes back a bit to, to your MacGyver character. If you have a Swiss Army knife, and if you do, which tool do you find the most useful? Well, the old days, the corkscrew, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are far gone. Um, well, I don't know. What? Let's take a poll. Anybody? You got a favorite? I like the big blade. I gotta be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it okay. can do. It does. Historically, it does the most good for mankind and uh, for the evolution of the human race. Like it got rid of the weaker members of the herd, or. <laughs>
well, you're more likely to be able to slice your donut in half. <laughs> I guess you got a lot of uh, Swiss army knives in your life, but we wanted to give you something to remember our little country by. So this is like the uh, Czech army knife, I would guess. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we are a small country. <laughs> It's almost older than America. <laughs> 1794 is when the factory was founded. That is the, that does yeah, we were, we were founded in 1776. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Thank you. This is the best. I, I'm dead serious about this. This is the best gift I've got on stage here today. <laughs> Speak up. 